This happened to me when I was 20. I was traveling about eight and a half miles from college on a coach bus. It was quiet and it wasn't the first time I've traveled like this. It never was a problem because there was usually no one on the bus at 10 p.m. As usual, I sat in the middle of the bus by the window and a few stops in, a guy who looks like a fat Bruce Willis with a beard gets on the bus and sits a few seats away from me, but he reeked of mud and just plain ass. I did my best not to gag, but it was bad. I spent most of my trying not to gag and to avoid looking at him, even though he stared at me the entire time. After a while, he took his shoes off and started eating chicken from a bag, mumbling shit about some guy named David. The bus driver asked him to put his shoes back on and stop eating the chicken because, well, it was raw, but the guy just stared at him while eating. I ignored him for a while until he turned around and asked me, where's your stop? He might have been a crackhead to be honest. And I told him, oh, it's a long way away. He stared at me for a while more and literally sucked down a raw chicken breast. I mean, full deep throat this thing. And then went on rambling about David and how God wasn't able to protect him anymore. I was pissing myself thinking this guy was going to follow me home. So I decided to get off at the bus stop that was near the town rather than my house, just so he wouldn't know exactly where I lived. I got off and the guy glared at me through the window as it passed like I just stole his bag of raw chicken. A few days later, the same trip started, and the same chicken guy got on, again rambling about David, and was now eating roadkill or something. It stank up the bus, but the bus driver was also shitting himself, because this guy was just casually munching away on a rabbit corpse. The guy turns around to me and asks, Do you like your apartment? Me being the anxiety-filled bitch I am, I went into panic overdrive, so I told him to fuck off and mind his own business, which I think pissed him off because he started yelling and rambling that David was going to find me and that he was going to cut my pretty body up and feed it to uh, the chicken man. This guy was going absolutely ballistic, and a few minutes later he just goes dead silent. Then he presses the bus stop button and gets off. I didn't see this guy for weeks after this until the bus went by the stop that he got on at. But now, it had a few police cars and ambulances. The guy apparently had tied himself to the bus stop hole and set himself on fire, and some woman found him burned to a crisp. Now I try to get on buses earlier in the day and not sit near people who eat raw animals and smell like mud. My family does have a story of a ghost who lives in my grandparents' house in the countryside. Some have heard footsteps running in the hallway at night, but no one had left their room. Some report seeing the ghost, and others hear, who is there, in French, while going up the stairs. We talk French, YM, so they named it, who is there, in French, qui est là, but no one was there. Sometimes when I stood over as a child, I'd hear a woman talking in the kitchen, or someone laughing in one of the spare rooms upstairs, and I would go to see if it was my mother or grandmother, but... There was no one in the room. One night, I was in my grandmother's room watching TV. It wasn't dark at the time, but it was dull outside because of the storm that came over. My room was pretty bright at the time, and I was sitting watching some movies, and the door to my cupboard opened. I thought it was just my cat messing around, so I ignored it and kept watching my movie, but it moved again, so I paused my movie and watched it move for a while. Then, I saw what looked like a hand move around in the clothes, and I started panicking. So I called for my sister, but she, of course, wasn't home at the time. I literally got so scared I considered jumping out the window because I genuinely thought someone had broke into our house. I left the house and stood outside until someone came home, who was my grandmother. I told her everything that happened and she said it was a common occurrence in our house because it was used as a military hospital during World War II and some of the soldiers and nurses had died in some of the rooms. After a few years, I went back and... I didn't experience much. I live in the heart of the largest pine forest in my country. This makes for a beautiful, albeit rugged wilderness, that can shift from pleasantness to dangerous, empty to heavily populated in the blink of an eye. My house and the town are separated by 72 or so miles of pretty isolated backwoods driving. There is one stretch between communities where there aren't homes or residential areas at all, and that's about for 50 miles or so. 
This is a national forest for outdoor recreation. The only buildings are ranger stations and one observatory that is pretty far back into the forest. The observatory has many weird legends about it, like being privately owned by the RSPP. They look after animals and shit. My dad was driving between towns in this very isolated span of woodland when he came upon a kid walking down the roadway. He looked to be maybe 15. My dad doesn't stop for people as a general rule, but he turned around and decided to help the kid out. Only, when he circled back, did he realize his mistake. The person wasn't a boy, but a small man, close to his age, about the mid-30s. He had boyish characteristics, but he was dirty and strange. Even his clothes were weird, almost too plain as if handmade. He tried to get in the car, but my dad kept it locked. He questioned the guy for a bit and learned that the man believed he was an android trying to make his way back to the colony. He explained there was a camp of homeless people, what he called vagrants, that were being reconfigured into androids. These androids weren't allowed to drive or interact with humans as a whole. That was not unless they became separated from the rest of the colony. This wouldn't stand out as strange if not for all of the other stories I've heard about this place. A ramshackle place with plywood buildings and other roadside trash coaxed into shelter. Cults and commune are the usual labels, and word is, they all dress exactly the same. This short story is more about my friend who works as a bus driver around the towns. He's a day bus driver in the cities in my country and picks up people from different parts of the towns. A few weeks ago, he was doing an evening route. The bus was empty because he had just started his shift, and every so often, he's looking up at the screen that had cameras around the bus for safety reasons, and he kept seeing someone in the seats, just behind the driver cabin. And when he went to look to see if someone was on the bus, because he thought it was just his friend fucking with him, but it wasn't. He passed it off as a digital malfunction or something, but every day, at the same time, it would be there. So, now, he sits and talks to it when the bus is empty. I saw this around 30 to 40 feet off of a hiking trail through a forested area, where the entrance to the trail started in a residential neighborhood. The entrance was probably half a mile or so from where I saw her. I was on a run and had started from a different path entrance, and was planning to exit the trail at this other entrance. I would reached a stretch of trail that was pretty steep and rocky, so I started walking down, talking out loud to myself about work and what I had to do when I got home, and I saw something move from the corner. When I looked over, it took me a good ten seconds to make out what I was seeing. It was a woman with shorter length hair, completely naked, facing me and staring at me. Mind you, it was negative five degrees Celsius. For my American friends, that's 23 degrees Fahrenheit. When I realized what I was seeing, I was pretty alarmed, to say the least. For context, I'm a woman and I was 20 years old at the time, so I just walked down the hill as quick as I could, and then I just ran out of the trail without looking behind me. Once I was out of the trail, I thought about it and my alarm changed to concern because, well, it was pretty damn cold out and this woman was just chilling in the forest butt naked, and it was starting to get dark. I started to wonder if maybe she was having some sort of mental health crisis, and I ended up calling the police non-emergency line to ask if they could perform a wellness check. The police eventually called me back a couple hours later or so after I called them because they couldn't find anyone up there. They wanted to make sure they were checking the right spot, and when they described it, it was 100% the right spot. Never found out who she was or why she was up there. I still wonder about it sometimes. Not sure if she was a quote-unquote wild woman. I mean, I suppose it's possible because I know some of the homeless people in that town would set up camp in the bush. But she certainly creeped me out, though. So I, my family, and their friends used to go to Alderney every year on the summer holidays. And they were pretty relaxed about what we kids got up to. So... I spent a lot of my childhood running around and exploring the relatively small island. We weren't allowed in the old quarry or in the concrete bunkers, but pretty much anywhere else was fair game, as long as we were careful. One time, we were doing our usual thing when we found a place we'd never been before. A relatively open space 
surrounded by weird small hills every now and again in the ground, all covered with brambles and strewn with bits of broken brick and chunks of crumbling concrete. A few visible walls that had almost completely collapsed, rusted, coagulated iron sticking out of the brambles in one corner, that sort of thing. And there were so many blackberries. So we spent ages there, wandering through the area, stuffing ourselves with blackberries and playing hens. For people who don't know, hens is just tag, and we were having a generally good time. It was great. It should have been a creepy place, but it was summer and we were on holiday. So that just made it exciting and fun. When we got back and told our parents where we'd been, they told us not to go there again, which I was pretty pissed about to be honest, but they wouldn't tell us why. It was only when I got a lot older that I realized I had been playing in the ruins of one of the concentration camps. There is a part of me that's still creeped out by that to this day, but another part of me thinks maybe that's the best way for evil places to be treated. Not to be forgotten, I think my parents should have taught me what it was, but also not to be feared either, because I feel like a bunch of kids laughing and playing might have done a lot to exercise any ghosts that were still there. I was helping out someone who worked for social services to trap a dog. The elderly lady had died and when they went to her house, they found her husband on the sofa, very mummified with parts of his face and legs missing. The house was full to the ceilings with all sorts of stuff. Clearly hoarders with bugs everywhere and dog shit covering the floor, to the point that my shoes would stick. I will never be able to say how the house made me feel, but it was just mega creepy and really fucking gross. Just frozen in time with layers of dust and plain dirt all over. I remember by the door, a newspaper from 1956, just placed there and never read. We managed to trap the dog with all the wounds and fleas, etc., and sadly, most had to be euthanized. It turned out that the dog was pretty much eating away at the old man's body and eating its own shit and flesh. It chewed off most of its own paw and tail, and it was really sad to see something like this get so bad. The Trafford Center, though it sounds weird for somewhere that was always busy, I used to work night shifts there over the Christmas holidays, and there was all sorts of strange stuff that went on. One night, there was just the two of us in the building at the same time. I was by the front door of the shop and the other guy was in the stockroom, a good 40 to 50 meters away. He came out of the stockroom and found me, asked if I'd been in the back at all, then told me an empty box had come flying towards him, as if someone had chucked it. I would have said he was taking the piss out of me, but he isn't the sharpest tool in the shed and his face was drained. We would often hear talking and laughing in one of the upstairs stock rooms, as well as weird random lights, and what I can only describe as wisps, kind of like laser pointers, but pure white, and those random chills again that everyone accounted for elsewhere in the shop whenever someone mentioned something. Apparently, a toddler had died in the center years ago, and staff at Pizza Hut and Build-A-Bear also mentioned some creepy stuff that happened around the area too, like handprints on the windows, Build-A-Bear going missing and turning up in the staff toilets. I don't know, it was all just generally weird. I used to work in a place that had a big hall thing on one side that was used for events and stuff, plus a cafe and an order theater on the other. The hall thing is modern, the theater not so much, and both sides are linked by a long corridor with offices and storerooms going off of it. There's a caretaker's flat above the theater, but no one lived there, and it was used as a storeroom. People I worked with refused to go in there because it was creepy as fuck. Anyway, shift manager one day asked me to take some stuff up to the flat. I was new, so I didn't know anything about it. There was a narrow flight of stairs that led up to it, so I started climbing them and realized about halfway up that I was feeling a bit of dread. No reason. I got to the top and by this point, all I could feel was the really intense feeling of dread. I opened the door and the flat was well lit in the daytime and it was used as a store for old theater props. Weirdly, it's not that creepy because it was well lit, but again, I still felt pure dread and it was to the point that the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I dropped off what I had to take up there and I went back down the stairs. 
The feeling of dread slowly passed as I made my way down the steps. I got back to the cafe and everyone just looked at me. It was a bit weird. Someone finally broke the silence and said, So, did you see the ghost up there? I kinda exhaled in relief and told him about the intense dread, but that I had not seen a ghost. Other staff members then started sharing their experiences of the flat. I worked at an event a few months later, and it was a late night slash early morning type of thing. We were cleaning up and restocking and I found myself walking down the corridor that linked the two sides of the building. It looked out over the sea and the sun was coming up. It looked lush. I stopped to take a photo and the picture was covered in orbs. It was very early morning so I noped the fuck out and I deleted the photo. Fuck that place, man. There was a place near my old house called Overton Bridge. A really cool place to visit if you like historic buildings and such anyway. For years, since the bridge and house were built there, there were stories about dogs jumping off the side of the bridge because, apparently, they heard the ghost lady who haunts the bridge call them. Once, me and my friend were high going on a walk on the trail around the bridge. We saw a woman walking along the bridge in a white dress. My friend and I were probably tripping balls at the same time, but we had both seen this ghost bitch walking around. A few years after this, my mate took his dog up to the bridge and it jumped off and died. He was devastated and refused to ever even pass the building or bridge. A few years back, I was walking through the woods off of the made path a bit and I smelt this really overpowering sweet smell. Being the nosy cunt I was, I went off to find it to have a look and I found a dead body. The guy had clearly been there a while and was not looking too hot. All swollen and green and black with various runny bits. The local wildlife had also been dining well for a few weeks. I called the police who told me to wait with the dead guy until they arrived. Being in the middle of butt fuck nowhere, it took a while for them to arrive. And it got dark and I just sat there in the dark with a dead dude for a really long time. Turns out, he committed suicide. For a long time afterwards, I had dreams about him, and he would talk to me and not say nice things, mainly about how he was angry that I had disturbed his resting place, and he wanted me to kill myself. Probably just my imagination, but all disturbing at the time. He still turns up in my dreams from time to time, and no doubt will be tonight after typing this shit. The dude's a dick. About two years ago, I was driving home from a family reunion pretty late at night, and the drive was about two to three hours long. I didn't stay the night because I had to be back for work the following day. Most of the drive was on roads with dense bushes and trees on either side. The real creepy ones that you see a lot in shitty horror movies. Anyway, I'd been driving about 45 minutes and I was starting to get really tired. You know how sometimes you just suddenly become really tired out of nowhere? Well. Yeah, that happened to me. I knew I wasn't going to last, but I didn't come across any place that I felt I could park and safely sleep. After it became clear to me that I wasn't going to find a place to pull up, and that my tiredness wasn't going away, I did something very questionable. I pulled over to the side of the road onto the grass, behind some bushes, to try and hide my car from anybody else who was going to come past the roads that weren't empty. I came across another car every few minutes or so, and I made a mental note that the time was 11.22, and I fell asleep. Sometime later, I was awoken by a scratching sound. I looked at the clock, 11.50. The sound stopped after a few seconds, and because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around, and I simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same sound, and it was now 12.40. This time, it really freaked me out because the sound didn't stop. The thought ran across my mind that it was just an animal inspecting the car, but why would it return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in my rearview mirror, and I just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. Now, at the time, I thought it was a fucking hook killer. You know, the one that scratched a couple's car and then slaughtered the guy when he got out to investigate. Fuck that, I thought to myself, so I got the fuck out of there. There was a bend no more than a few hundred yards up the road, and 
As I came around to it, there was a fucking car, parked off the side of the road with the driver's side door, opened. I slowed down just to look to see if anyone was in there, and there wasn't. Then I looked in the rearview mirror. I didn't see anything, and all of a sudden, this guy comes sprinting around the corner. He starts screaming at me, shouting stuff like, Hey! Hey! You! Get the fuck out of your car! Now! Well, I noped the fuck out of there, and I sped off. I never saw the guy again. So, more of the story, don't fucking sleep on the side of a deserted road. I once sat across from a man who told me about killing his wife, how he cut her into pieces and boiled her head and ate the rest of her, keeping her bones and making ornaments, and then giving them to people for Christmas and birthdays. He explained why he killed her and wished he could talk to the parents so they could understand that what he did was a good thing. It obviously wasn't, because all she did was tell him that she didn't feel like sleeping with him one night, all because she was just tired from work. And this guy basically flipped his lid and decided to Hannibal Lecter, his wife, of nine years. I sat with him for 40 minutes as he went into detail, and it was the most surreal 40 minutes of my life. I was sitting there like, what the fuck, man? But I didn't say it to his face because, well, I didn't want to be eaten by him. It wasn't a psych ward after all. The guy had just lost it. He's now medicated and such, and I haven't seen him in years, but fuck. That was not a fun experience. I used to live in the Burns Flats in Oklahoma. When I was a kid, my mom used to tell me stories about the native Indians who lived on the land. I was out playing one day and it got really quiet and I started hearing chanting. I listened to it for ages wondering what it was. Then my mom came outside and dragged me inside the house, panicking. And I was confused, like what the fuck mom? And she told me about a tornado that was hitting parts of the town and she explained that. Every time the town was going to be hit by tornadoes or bad storms, she would hear chanting, which was, supposedly, the spirits of the Indians warning everyone about it. It gave me chills for weeks after, but when I started living there as an adult, I realized it wasn't as bad because now I could get my shit sorted just in case I was hit by the weather. Oklahoma Native Indian ghosts saved my life, for real. Back in 2004, I was a young 17-year-old country girl in the city for the first time in college. One night, I decided I could totally safely walk back to my dorm at around 1 in the morning, despite not really knowing where I was. Of course, I instantly end up wandering around a terrible part of the city. Most of the streetlights are busted out, trash is everywhere, loud arguments from inside the dilapidated as fuck row houses. I wouldn't even want to be here in the middle of the day. A Ford truck drives up behind me and slows down so they're keeping pace with me for nearly an entire block. I look over and there are five unsavory looking guys inside. By this point, I was approaching an intersection and they pull up, make a left, and stop in the street directly in my path. Motherfuckers. I'm completely shooting myself at this point and I just stand there right in front of them. My mind goes completely blank. I've never been this scared in my life. It didn't even make sense to try to run because they would have caught me without question. I'm not really sure how long I stood there, but suddenly, the porch light in the house just past the car comes on. A dude casually strolls outside carrying a bag of trash, and the truck drives away. I completely break down crying and shaking. The dude spots me and listens to my probably incoherent story. He then takes me inside and gives me a soda. Afterwards, he and his roommate walk me back to my dorm. They were both lovely and invited me to check out their stand-up sometime, but unfortunately, I was too young to get into a bar. I never saw them again. I don't even remember their names, but I feel pretty confident that if that guy hadn't decided to take his trash out at 1 a.m. on a Saturday, my life would have taken a really shitty turn that night. I was staying at my older sister's at the time, and her spare room was a baby doll converted into a lamp. The lamp would only turn on by holding the doll's cold plastic hand and raising and lowering the arm. The doll stood on a nightstand next to the bed facing the door, greeting everyone who entered with a creepy dead-eye smile. I was alone in the house one day, and I wanted a blanket from the cupboard closet. Luckily for this scaredy cat, there were two important factors that worked in my favor. One, it was mid-afternoon, and I wouldn't even need the lamp's light. And two, the closet was located immediately next to the door's entrance. 
So without lifting my gaze, I stared at the floor, entered the room, and turned 180 degrees. Now my back was towards the door, I quickly opened the closet door and reached for a blanket, when suddenly something about the room was different, brighter. The light was on and the peach fuzz hairs on the back of my neck uncurled. I froze for an eternity and then I felt my survival instinct kick in and I just wanted to run, screaming in horror, but before all of that, I still had to look. Man, I wish I hadn't looked. As I turned to exit the room, I lift my stupid head only to confirm that the doll's hand was raised and it was pointed directly at me. I was forever scared shitless of baby dolls or just dolls in general. Okay, but a doll lamp does sound fucking terrifying. About 10 years ago, I was good friends with a girl who was interested in the paranormal as I was. She bought a Ouija-type homemade board. It had words and drawn symbols. We never had much luck with it. One night, she took it over to her mom's house, and they apparently had a really intense experience with it. Her mom asked her to leave it for a few nights so she could use it on her own. My friend left it, and we made plans to visit her mom that weekend so we could all play together. So, that night, we head over in hopes of a good supernatural experience. As soon as I got in the car, I just had a feeling of dread. I've had a few brushes with paranormal stuff in the past, and the prospect wasn't frightening to me, but I just felt wrong about it. We get to her mom's house, and her mom pretty much seems to dislike me the second I walked in the door. The feeling of dread is even more intense once I got to the house. I just sort of brushed it off as paranoia, and I tried to be friendly. My friend's mom takes the board out of the box, and it looks old, weathered, like it had been left in the sun for a few years. The previously bright colors were faded and worn. My friend said, What happened to the board? And her mom told her that it had been, quote unquote, sweating. So her mom puts it on the table, looking at me with the utmost of suspicion. At this point, I felt absolutely terrified. My palms are clammy and shaky. I put them on the oracle and her mom screams, no. I take them off and she says, they don't like you. They don't want to answer your questions. I can just tell. And we leave very shortly after that. My friend being upset. She says that whole episode was very out of character for her mom. Her mom refused to give the board back and I wound up buying my own. No luck with that one either. I took it as a sign and... I gave it to some other friends.